It has been six months, six months since Hamas fired missiles and broke into Israel, killing more than 1,200 people, mostly civilians. Six months since Israel began its all-out assault on Gaza, killing more than 33,000 people, again, mostly civilians. And for the 134 people still account unaccounted for after being abducted on October 7th, six months of captivity. According to the Israeli government, 254 people were taken hostage on October 7th by Hamas and affiliated groups. In November, Hamas and Israel reached a temporary ceasefire agreement. 112 hostages were released over three days, while Israel released some political prisoners, paused airstrikes, and allowed aid to enter the Gaza Strip. Most of those hostages released were women and children, but the ceasefire fell apart after the third round of hostages were released, with 136 hostages still being held at that time. On December 15th, three hostages managed to escape captivity. They emerged from a building waving makeshift white flags. They were shot and killed by Israeli forces. The IDF says they were mistaken for Hamas militants. Then in early February, Israel released a statement confirming that at least 30 of the remaining hostages were dead. And just hours ago, the IDF announced that the body of Elad Katsir had been recovered and returned to Israel. Katsir was abducted on October 7th from kibbutz near Oz and was murdered while he was in captiv captivity, according to Israel. His mother was also taken hostage. She was released during the November ceasefire. His father was killed on October 7th. On February the 12th, two hostages, a 70-year-old man and a 64-year-old man, were rescued in a dramatic Israeli raid in northern Gaza. More than 70 Palestinians were killed during that rescue mission. Today, roughly 100 hostages, six of whom are American, are believed to be alive, alive in Gaza. When 112 hostages were released back in November, the United Nations and Israeli health officials found that their more than 50 days in captivity at that point had taken a physical and psychological toll. The older hostages reported that Hamas had taken their glasses and hearing aids. They were disoriented, often cold. Some reported being treated with kindness. Others reported being kicked and beaten. They were fed, but not enough. On average, the children who were released had lost roughly 15% of their body weight. They were pale and gaunt from having been kept underground with no sunlight for nearly two months. Many of them had lice, rashes, and skin infections from unsanitary conditions. And that was after less than two months of captivity. It's now been six months. This week, Israel saw what was likely the largest protest since October 7th, as tens of thousands of people took to the streets to protest Benjamin Netanyahu and his approach in this war. Most were there to show support for the hostages, accusing Netanyahu of failing to prioritize the hostages still presumed to be alive somewhere in Gaza. Meanwhile, Netanyahu and his administration continue to insist that they are, in fact, doing everything they can do to bring the hostages home. This week, family members of hostages sat down with NBC News's Lester Holt. Jillian Kay, stepmother of American hostage Sagui Dekel Chen, said this. Look at Gaza. How can you not look at that and, um, and not feel unbelievable sympathy, right, for the suffering that's going on there? And here we are with our love, our innocent loved ones, hostages for 181 days hidden in tunnels. We can't see them anymore. We can't see like we can see what's going on above ground. We can't see them. So they, yeah, they, they, they kind of disappear in this horror that's going on. And there's no question that it feels like the world is moving on. One of the people interviewed was Rachel Goldberg Poland. Her 23-year-old son, Hirsch, is one of the Israeli Americans still believed to be alive in Gaza. Hirsch was at the Supernova Music Festival in southern Israel on October 7th when Hamas attacked. As the Hamas terrorists descended on the festival, Hirsch and a friend ran for their lives. They made it to a bomb shelter where they attempted to hide with 27 other people, but the militants threw grenades and sprayed gunfire into the bunker. Many of the people hiding there died. Hamas video shows Hirsch alive that day, half his left arm blown off as he was dragged into Gaza, now a hostage. Rachel has now been six months without her son. She said she and her family has held on to one mindset to get through these last six months, knowing her son is still a hostage, knowing her son is somewhere in war-torn Gaza. He said this hope is mandatory. 
Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.